Hello, my name is Sarah Edgar from Pretty Fabrics and Trims and in today's schoolhouse video I'll be sharing a little happy introduction to English paper piece hexes. I absolutely love stitching hexes. Uh, they're my favourite EPP shape. This is our Happy Hexy Huswife and it's made up of three quarter inch hexes. Now the measurement is, is always taken as one of the side measurements and it becomes important when you're mixing and matching shapes together. But more about that in another video. Um, the, the hexes themselves were made up of um, lots of different fabrics and sewn together in a random way. Sometimes it's nice to do something with a little bit more order and on this piece, um, which I stitched many years ago, um, I made up lots of little half inch hexy flowers and then stitched these together. Again, you can see here the side measurement is half an inch. I think I almost prefer the back of this to the front and um, all the hexes were thread basted and I'm going to show you how I did that um, in, a little, in a little moment. If you're new to um, EPP, it can be a little bit daunting to start on a big piece. So a single flower is, is a lovely way. Um, this one is on the A Little Happiness in Every Stitch mini quilt. And um, I, I do this lots and lots. This is one of our Happy Hexy cushion kits. They'll be coming back into stock very soon. And they even look lovely when um, you applique them to a pin cushion. This was in this year's advent box. And um, I literally did a ring of linen hexes and then embroidered some snowflakes on top. So let's talk about what you're going to need, as well as some pretty fabrics, primarily you're going to need your EPP paper shape. Now these are made for us, um, for our Happy Hexy Huswife kits, our cushion kits and our pink cushion kits. And they're made for us in this country and I had them designed so that they had the hole already cut out of the center, which helps when it comes to removing the papers at a later stage. You're also going to need some specialist EPP needles. Now, my needle of choice is not too long. It has a small eye because you're using just a, a, a general sewing thread. And um, primarily it needs to be sharp as it possibly can be. The thread that I always use for EPP is Orifal 50 weight and I vary the colour depending on the project that I'm sewing. You'll also, if you decide to glue base, need a glue pen. Now I use well, this one by Sewline. Um, it comes in a kit with a glue refill and a spare and then you can buy glue refills separately as well. Um, don't panic, the glue is blue but it goes on blue and then dries clear. Now something that I would just like to touch on very briefly is acrylic templates. Now they're a really nice thing to have particularly if you want to fussy cut fabric. They, they are made with guidelines so they have holes pre-drilled in them and lines etched on them to enable you to cut a piece of fabric um, so that you get the same design cut in multiple hexes.
So as you can see here, I'm using the center hole to line up with the floral motif. I would then draw around it and then cut out with a pair of scissors or you can use very carefully a rotary cutter. Then if you wanted to cut another one, you just move it down, line up the center with the floral motif and so on. Now they're lovely and they are great, um, but they're not essential. So what I'm gonna show you now is how I actually cut out hexes for the majority of the time. And you'll be pleased to know it's really easy. So all you need to simply do is to hold the hexi paper on top of your fabric. And I'm right-handed by the way, so I'm holding the hexi on top of the fabric with my left hand. And then simply using a pair of scissors and eyeballing the seam allowance, you're going to cut out the fabric. Now, the one thing that you must bear in mind is that the hexi is the finished size. So you are adding on a seam allowance as you cut out. Now, with EPP, I like to add a approximate 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, so slightly more than the standard quarter of an inch. This just gives you a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to basting, and it is as simple as that. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to basting your fabrics to your papers. And um, we're gonna start off with thread basting. So you're gonna need some EVP needles and some thread. Um, so just to clarify, I use Orifil 50 weight thread. And what I would normally do is color match my thread to the fabric that I'm using as best that I can. But for the purposes of this uh, tutorial, I'm going to use a bright blue thread because I think you'll be able to see my stitches a little bit easier. Okay, so what you need to do is thread your needle and pop a knot in the end of the thread. Then position the paper piece. So that's the right side of the fabric there. So turn it over so the wrong side of the fabric is facing you and then pop the paper piece in the center of it so you've got an even seam allowance all the way around. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is fold over the first seam allowance against the hexagon paper piece. You can, if you want, pop a binding clip in just to hold it in place for you. Um, the important thing is that when you wrap the fabric around the paper piece that you create a nice crisp finish, that your, your fabric's wrapping nice and tightly. What you don't want to happen is to wrap your fabric and it sit away from the paper piece, as you can see here. What that ultimately does is, is change the shape of your hexagon. And when you're then trying to piece one hexagon against another and create your flower or your finished fabric, your hexes just will not fit together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take that binding clip away. Um, I generally just hold my paper pieces as you can see here. Um, you want to have a knot in your thread and you're going to make your first stitch and you're going to secure that first corner. So when you put your needle in, make sure that you're going through the seam allowance um, fabric alone. You don't want to be going through the paper piece or through ultimately to the front of the hexi. These stitches are gonna sit at the back of your hexagon. So once you've made your first stitch, um, let's just zoom in a little bit so that you can get a better view there we go, that's better, isn't it? So make a second stitch, and this second stitch will secure that seam allowance nice and tightly. So then, can you see how that's just creating a lovely tight hexagon shape? So turn the hexagon round and fold over your next seam allowance, and then your thread's going to travel on top of the seam. Take your needle and make another little stitch and then a second stitch will secure that fold of fabric at the corner. And then move around 
and you're just going to repeat this process on all six sides. So one stitch and then your second stitch will secure and then travel your thread across the seam allowance. Remembering to keep your folds of the fabric nice and tight to retain that hexagon shape. There we are, so another corner is held nice and secure and I'm just going through the fabric, I'm not going through the paper piece in any way. I actually love thread basting hexagons. It's almost as um, therapeutic as um, sewing them together. And um, when you get a nice little stack of um, prepared hexes, it's um, very satisfying, I must say. Oh, can you see there how the thread just looped around the other corner? You don't want that to happen because it could um, affect the integrity of your basting stitches. So once you've gone round, end up where you started and then just knot off your thread. And then if we have a look at the, um, the front side of the hexagon, you can see that there is no sign at all of your basting stitches. So that is what your finished hexagon will look like. And your stitching there, you can see, is literally through the seam allowance alone. So snip off that thread. And just to clarify, I would normally for this type of basting use a thread color that coordinates with the actual fabric color. These basting stitches stay in, you do not take them out. So what you've got to imagine is that once that paper's been removed, um, the last thing you would want to happen is to see a dark color basting stitch as a traveling thread through the fabric. So what I'm now going to show you is a, another form of thread basting, which is particularly good when you're thread basting a larger size hexi. So say something from one and a half inches upwards. So just like before, you want to position the hexi paper in the center um, on the wrong side of your fabric. And again, I've got my dark colored thread and I've got a knot in it. So as you did before, we're going to wrap the first side of the fabric tightly around the paper. This time, however, our basting stitches are going to go through the paper and through to the front side. So, There we go. I'm making my first stitch and it's going all the way through the seam allowance right through to the front, the right side of the hexi. I'm going to travel my thread across so it comes up on top of the folded seam allowance on the second edge. Then I'm going to fold down the next side's seam allowance and take my stitch across so it's now holding down the seam allowance and then continue to work my way round folding down the edges and as you can see I've got some big basting stitches on both sides so on the wrong side of the hexi which is what we're looking at here And there'll also be some stitches on the right side of the hexi. So now I've gone round all six sides. So I can bring my needle back through and then I'm going to 
knot off to secure the basting thread. So just snip that away. So when you look at the right side of the hexi, so this would be what you would see in your finished piece, you will see that there are three big basting stitches. Now, this is when a dark colour thread or a contrasting thread colour works really well because you will obviously need to take out those basting stitches once you've finished your hexagon piece, so i.e. once you've sewn all your hexes together. Um, so a contrasting thread just makes that easy for you. So there's your two different styles of thread basted hexes and you can see why I tend to do the first method um, because it just alleviates a whole step of removing basting stitches. Now we're going to do glue basting. So as we've done on the two previous thread basting examples, you make sure that your fabric is right side facing down with your paper positioned centrally on the wrong side of the fabric. Now your glue pen is a specialist glue pen. Um, as I said previously, um, the, the glue is blue, um, but once dry goes clear, so don't panic. Um, just a little housekeeping, make sure that you keep your glue stick nice and clean. Um, it just makes it easier to use and you'll get in less of a, a mess, quite literally. So what you want to do is to apply the glue to the paper piece. So not the fabric, you always glue onto your paper. And can you see here, it's going on blue, but rest assured it will dry clear. It just enables you to see where, where you are basting. Then fold your fabric seam allowance over. And again, just make sure that you're wrapping the fabric nice and tightly around the paper piece shape. Then glue baste across the second edge. So you're obviously having to go over your previous seam allowance. That's, that's right. So then fold down the second side. Again, just make sure that your edges are nice and tight and then work your way around all six sides. You'll find that, you know, if you sweep your glue pen with intent, um, just one sweep is, is generally enough. If you want to, go twice, but you don't need any more. And, and just there, can you see there's a little bit of glue showing on the fabric? That's, that's fine, it will, it will dry clear, so don't worry. So keep working round, and um, don't worry, the, the glue stays, whilst it's a temporary adhesive, it does stay in place. So don't panic, you're not gonna suddenly come down and find that all your papers have suddenly come unstuck. It will stay in place as long as you need it to. So that's it, that is your wrapped glue basted hexi, all ready for sewing. Oh, there's just a loose thread there, let's get rid of that. And just a, a note if you're worrying about um, how do you actually get the papers out? When the time comes, which is not yet, when the time comes, and I'll explain that later, if you press your sewn hexi, so once you've sewn all your hexes together, if you press it when you're ready to take the papers out, you'll find that the heat from the iron just releases the glue and you can just lift the sides and pop the papers out, no problem. Okay, so let's get stitching. So what I've laid out here is a simple hexi flower. And um, you're going to need your thread. And as I said before, I use Oracle 50 weight thread. It's my go-to for EPP. Um, it's always, I think, a worry as to what color thread to use. Um, you know, particularly here where you've got a dark hexi in the center and then lighter threads. Um, you know, it comes down to personal choice. I tend to sew with a with a lighter thread. Um, 
This is the Happy Hexy Huswife, and you can see there I've got a white hexy butting up against a, a red hexy and a blue hexy. And yes, you can see just a little bit of my stitching, but it doesn't worry me. At the end of the day, you're hand sewing and your stitches are really teeny, but it just tells the story that, that you are hand sewing and it's not a machine sewn piece. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use red thread so that you can see my stitches as I make them. Um, hopefully you won't be able to see them too much on the on the right side of the hexi flower once I've um, finished stitching. But as I said, it's handmade, it's hand sewn. Um, we're not aiming perfection here. So take your center hexi. And just for your information, I'm using some older pre-cut hexi papers that I had at home. So they haven't got the, the pre-cut hole in the center, which the ones that you get in your Happy Hexi Huswife kit, for example, will have. So you then take one of your hexi outer petals. And the idea is that you place one on top of the other so that the shape completely lines up and marries up okay so you've got one on top of the other and then you're going to stitch one of the sides now you might want to use um, one of those binding clips just to hold them together if that makes you feel that you've got a bit more control having two hands free personally I don't something to bear in mind um, particularly if you're using fussy cut um, fabrics um, is just double check when you're placing your hexes one on top of the other um, and taking into account the side that you're going to be stitching that your design is sitting as you wish. You don't want to end up thinking that you're going to get horizontal lines, for example, on one of the fabrics to then find that you've got vertical lines or your house is upside down. So here we go, um, just making the first stitch. Now the idea is that you're going to nip the fabric on that seam, not go through the paper. As you can see here, um, if you go too low, you go through the actual paper and where your needle's showing, where I've just opened up those two hexes, that would actually be thread showing. So that isn't what you want. So just take your needle, nip the edge of the fabric don't go through the papers. And you can feel when you're getting it right. So make your first stitch and make it so that um, your stitch is around an eighth of an inch down from the end of the seam line and then work your way back up as I'm doing here. And with every stitch, just keep remembering, knit the fabric, not the paper. So add a couple of stitches in at the end. Um, the, the most delicate bit of any EPP is at any corner point. Um, that's where your shapes might come apart or it gets the most duress. So just adding a couple of um, little stitches there does help. So then start to work your way now back down the end of the seam line. I, I'm just moving that thread out of the way a little bit because it, it um, was just poking through, which I didn't want. So we're now gonna make lots of tiny little stitches and work our way across this one side of the hexi. Can you see how my needle is literally nipping the fabric? It almost seems like it's not going into the fabric, but you know, but it is. Um, but it really is the tiniest stitches, and the more successful you can be by making lots of lots of tiny stitches, the stronger the finished piece will be. Um, this particularly comes into play if you're making a 100% EPP quilt, for example. Um, you know, that's going to get lots of lots of use. So the last thing you want is your stitching coming undone. And that's where your choice of thread actually is important, which is why I use a 50 weight thread. So it's got some additional strength to it. Um, but it's still fine enough that your stitching is going to be nice and discreet too. 
So here we go, I've worked all the way down the side of the hexi um, until I've got to the corner. And then I'm um, going to make a couple of extra stitches. And I'm just counting here how many stitches I think I I made. It's probably around 18 or so. Um, as I say, you, you want them lovely and small and nice and tight together. Then to finish off, say so make sure that end corner is nice and secure and then work your way back up the line by about an eighth of an inch before knotting off your thread. So I do that by simply putting my needle through the loop, do that two or three times and that will be nice and secure. And then I always like to leave a, a sort of longish tail just to be again on the safe side that that is not going to come undone. And then if you open it up, yeah, you can see my see my stitching, but it's they're not huge by any extent, and um, and it's just showing that you you're hand piecing and you're not using a sewing machine for this. Okay, so now we're going to add the next hexi. So I've got my thread with a knot in it and there's the first two that are sewn together and I'm going to add the next one round. So as we did before, position it on top of the outer hexi on top of the center hexi, line them up so that they're sitting nice and snug and then make your first stitch about an eighth of an inch in from the end of the seam line. Work your way back up so that you're right at the corner and then start to work your way back down. Remember to add a couple of stitches at the end just to hold it nice and secure. Okay, so lots of stitches are the order of the day. Nip the fabric and then just work your way as you did previously down towards the other corner. So I'm nearly there, so I'm aiming for that corner where I'll then have three hexes all meeting up. So almost there. So putting in a couple of stitches for a nice secure end to that seam line then if I open it up ah now can you see what's happened here I've got a little bit of a gap they're not 100% meeting they're close but they're not 100% now don't panic okay it's close enough so now I'm folding over what are effectively are the two outer petals and that center hexi the dark blue one there is um, folded in half to enable me to turn the corner and that's fine um, you you will fold and hold the hexes in different ways as you progress round and and work your way around the seam lines so just do a few stitches at this corner point just to hold it in place and then start to work your way back down the seam line and you're now working on the two outer petals. So 
when I get to the end here, as before, I'm just doing an extra stitch just to make sure that it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to work my way back in before knotting off my thread. And leave a nice long tail. So there we go, we're now ready to add our next hexi. And then we will just continue to work all the way around until all six petals have been added. So as we did before, place the outer petal on top of the center hexi, line them up so that they're sitting nice and neatly, pop a knot in your thread, start just that smidgen, work your way back out to the outer corner. You see what happened there? The thread just wrapped over the um, over the the outer line there. So I'll just use my needle just to get it out of the way. Otherwise, you'd have ended up with a, a loop of thread, which you don't want. And then start to work your way back. Can you see how relaxing? this whole process is. I think it's just the repetitive stitching. You know, you're doing the same thing again and again. And for me, that's why I love it. You know, you can sit on an evening when you're tired, um, but not too tired that you don't want to do something. And um, if you're like me, have restless hands in an evening. So um, I tend to pop a good program on a box set or a film and sitting doing EPP is, is just wonderful. Look here, we've got another, another little gap. Again, don't panic, it's fine. It will all work out. So fold over that center hexi again and then pop a few stitches in the corner in that where you've got the three hexes all meeting together and that will just close it up. Can you see? It's already starting to close up and then by the time you've stitched this um, final seam line along this, this side of the hexes it will all have closed up and will be absolutely perfect. Here we go, I'm just going to loop off my thread so it's nice and secure, cut my tail. And that seam line where there was a little bit of a gap is now all nice and neat and tightly sewn together. Right, so that's half our hexi flower sewn. So if you bear with me, I'll now add on that fourth and fifth hexi and I'll be back in just a moment and we will add in the sixth and final petal. OK, 
Okay, so here we are. We're now going to be adding the sixth and final hexi. So this time I've placed it, the sixth hexi, on, effectively on top of hexi number five. Lining them up so that they sit exactly one on top of the other. And then I'm starting my stitching as I did before. So eighth of an inch in approximately, stitching back out to the outer corner. Remember you're doing this just to add some additional strength to your stitching and your seam line. And then I'm gonna make my way back up towards the center hexi and with this being the, the final six hexi you've actually got three seams that you're going to be sewing this time round um, but other than that you treat them exactly the same as what you have done previously so when you get up to the corner just make sure that you've added some nice tight stitches So that's one, one seam done and then fold over the hexi so that you can now work along that centre hexi seam line. So when we get to this corner, you'll again be moving your papers and sort of refolding them so that you can work on this third and final seam line. So there we go. Right, I'm going to turn, twist the flower a bit, bend that hexi in the middle so that those two outer hexes are now one on top of the other. And sew down this final seam line. We're almost there. flower so as you can see you, the stitches are visible ever so slightly and you know you've got to imagine if, if this was in a, an ivory thread you would hardly hardly see them and don't worry if you can it it really is part of the joy and pleasure of hand sewing that your stitches will be visible so don't worry go with it so now you've finished sewing a hexi flower i just want to share some of the pieces that i did earlier and also um, talk to you about when do you remove the papers so here's our hexi flower and can you see how this piece was made up of lots of little flowers all sewn separately and then sewn as a collective together it 
It's very simple, just literally fold your flowers as you sew the seam lines and you know, you'll be able to do that no problem. Um, on this example, it's another version of the Happy Hexy Huswife, um, but the cover is made up of columns of hexy. So I made vertical columns, um, there's six or seven hexies in each of those, and then sewed those together to form the piece of fabric that's used as the cover. On the Little Happiness in Every Stitch mini quilt, um, it has a single hexi flower. So in terms of removing the papers, and this is um, also one of our Happy Hexi pin cushions, which is a ring, so minus the centre hexi. Once you have finished your piece, so here the single flower or the hexi ring, press the fabrics and then remove the papers. If it's a piece of fabric that you're making or a quilt top, as you surround a hexi with other with six other hexes, it's okay to take the paper out, but do not remove the papers until you have finished sewing. You don't want to end up with hexes that need to be sewn together but they have no papers in them. I hope you've enjoyed watching that little introduction video and um, you're going to give Hexies a go. Don't forget you can find lots of pretty kits on our website at www.prettyfabricsandtrims.co.uk. Thank you for watching. Bye.